Good morning, everyone. Today is Wednesday, October the 13th, 2021, and we are going to take a look at this um, article that I've seen from the Christian Post. Title says, Former African Slave Criticizes Black Lives Matter. Says, quote, Slavery still exists in Africa today. And here's the thing. A lot of people don't want to talk about this or I should say probably don't even know that these things are happening, especially in countries such as Africa. And nobody's really expounded upon this, but it's just so funny how this whole Black Lives Matter thing turns into a real big deal. But no one wants to talk about the current slavery that is actually happening today in 2021 in a lot of these African countries. But, you know, everybody's so woke and, you know, Africa is our homeland. And, you know, there were so many atrocities that happened to us with the transatlantic slave trade and Africans and everybody's such a pan-African, but nobody wants to talk about this. But. Let's go ahead and read the article and see what this former slave, this is a guy who used to be a slave in Africa who escaped. Let's read. A former African slave said that Black Lives Matter and critical race theory advocates uh, advocates do not understand what is happening in Africa, where more than 9.2 million people are still in captivity and slavery, end quote. Now, when I click on this 9.2 million, it takes us to this website, Global Security Review. Now, this is updated uh, last year from September 20th, September 14, 2020. And you can see right here what the color codes, the darker the colors are, means that it that has the more higher um, population of slavery. And, you know, of course, it goes to the light where it's literally very small to, to no slavery. And we can see in Africa, there's still a lot of slavery going on in Africa today, right? And we look at right here in Mauritan, uh, Mauritania is some of the highest and the Central African Republic. Now, the Central African Republic has 22.3 million people that are enslaved. Well, is that right? Or is that percent? Because it almost looks like it, it, it is. No, it can't be. Well, I don't know. It could be. It could be. No, that is. Well, anyway, basically, it's just showing you exactly where the highest concentration of the uh, of the African basically uh, of the of where slavery is taking place and it's most heaviest in Africa but I'm not going to get into that that is a totally different topic totally different website anyway he continues quote I believe black lives matter do not understand what's going on in Africa they do not know what is going on around the world end quote bull gay bull guy dang a former slave and Sudanese presidential candidate during an interview with CBN news I almost said that this guy sounds like he's from Sudan. Uh, because if you guys know the guy, Bol Bol, uh, who's the son of Manute Bol, I think he's from Sudan. And there was another guy named Luol Deng who played in the NBA. Both of these guys played in the NBA. And uh, these are guys who were in the Sudan and they have the same, the, the similar names. But anyway, quote, they need to understand that slavery still exists in Africa today. More than 9.2 million people are still in captivity and in slavery, he said. Dang shared in 1987, Sudanese government-backed Muhajideen raiders kidnapped him, burned down his village, and made him a slave. Dang recalled how he, at age 7, and more than 700 other, cap other captured children were forced to walk 250 miles from their homes through the jungles. So this is in 1987. 
I was born in 82. So this is five years after I was born. So this is still recent. This is this is recent history. We're not talking about 1887 or 1787. We're talking about 1987. And the Mujahideen, they're not white people. They're not Europeans. These are other Africans. Quote, I was beat up. I was told what to do. And sometimes they used to put chains on my legs to the point I will become so disciplined to my master. End quote, he recalled. Now, I thought that white people were the only ones that were called master by black Africans. This whole narrative of this Black Lives Matter stuff, why, why aren't they talking about this? How come this isn't mainstream news? How come I got to go to thechristianpost.com? Something that is not, this is not a site that a lot of people go to and they refer to. But let's continue. After escaping ca captivity three years later, Dang went to Khartoum, where a Catholic charity helped him. Following a later move to Egypt, the U.S. offered him asylum. Now, hold on. Now, of course, Catholics and Protestants, us, we have a different outlook on the Bible. Different theology, right? Now, we hear so much from a lot of these woke black folk. Especially those, on the, not not too many in the, in, in the black Christian church. But a lot of these black folk outside of the Christian church, they always like to bring up Catholicism. Oh, them Catholics, them European Catholics came over there and rounded up all of the black people and took them to America and made them, and, and made them uh, slaves. They talk about the U.S. Oh, the United States. Oh, we still in captivity today. All of this rhetoric that we hear. But when we read this, a Catholic charity helped him. And he was offered asylum in the United States. Not Egypt, not Kemet. Kemet didn't help him. The black conscious people didn't help him. It was a Catholic charity group. And it was the United States who offered him asylum. But the United States is keeping black people in captivity, especially according to people like the Hebrew Israelites and these folks from the woke church. Dan contended, contends that in Libya, women are being sold into slavery for as little as $400. And I actually did a video on that a long time ago. Um, I think I'm going to link that to one of the end videos at the end of this video. So those recommended videos at the end of this, you guys go and check it out. And I did that video maybe about four or five years ago. Quote, a woman is being sold for $400 in a market in Libya right now. End quote. He said he argued that Black Lives Matter activists, quote, need to listen to people with my background. End quote. And this is what I've been saying. A lot of these folks who was touting this, they don't talk to these people who have actually gone through real slavery and real oppression. It is a false narrative that is being pushed. And this is why I hate when you got these black folk, black woke church folk trying to fall into this narrative that the media tells them to fall into instead of actually doing the groundwork and talking to people who's actually going through this stuff today, real captivity. In the U.S., there has been much debate nationally and locally on critical race theory, a theory embraced by so many social justice advocates and opposed by those who feel like it exaggerates the state of race relations in America today, which it does. Encyclopedia, Encyclopedia Britannica defines critical race theory, which is tied to the Marxist discipline of critical theory, as in quote, intellectual and social movement and loosely organized framework of legal analysis based on the premise that race is not a natural, biologically grounded feature of physical distinct subgroups of human beings, but a socially constructed 
culturally invented category that is used to oppress and exploit people of color, end quote. Adherents of the theory believe that, quote, racism is inherent in the law and legal institutions of the United States insofar as they function to create and maintain social, economic, and political inequalities between whites and non-whites, especially Africans American, African Americans, end quote. Foolishness. Straight foolishness. Critical race theory derives from critical theory, which it derives from Marxism. That's why when a lot of these folks, they, oh, you know, you calling us cultural Marxists and, and I ain't never heard of a cultural Marxist until now. Well, do your research. Nobody's just making up these categories. You guys are basically the ones, the woke church that is, and those who hold to this whole Black Lives Matter crap and critical race theory. You guys are the ones who have, over the years, made all of these terms and defined them. But then when people start to break the stuff down, now all of a sudden you want to change the definition. It's, it's, it's just a bunch of nonsense. And they're basically saying, in, in this last paragraph that I read, that racism is inherent. Like, they're saying that America was built on racism. That America says, you know what, in order for us to survive, we're going to invent racism. We're going to invent whites are superior than everyone else. And we're going to keep it that way. Not what happened, especially if you read and understand American history. Now, of course, there are a lot of things in this country. America has a lot of blood on its hands. So let's not get that twisted. America has a lot of blood on its hands. But there's a lot of things that America has done that has helped a lot of people, especially this guy who was mentioned in this article who has been a slave. Let's continue. Dang suggested that those who focus on America's past slavery and racism should also look at the opportunities and freedom the country provides in the present. That's exactly what I was just saying. That's what I was just alluding to. Quote, in fact, he said, the United States is the only country in the world that can give the slave freedom to become a congresswoman. This is an African, a person that was in real bondage, real bondage. I'm not talking about this whole, oh, well, you know, uh, I get to live in any neighborhood that I want and I'm making, you know, over a hundred grand a year and, and I got a good job and I'm putting my kids through college. But just because I see uh, an interaction between a white cop and a black person on the internet, I'm in, I'm in bondage. I'm oppressed. No, this is a man who was in, who was in real bondage, stolen away from his family, from folks who look like him in Africa. And he's saying that America is the only place where you can be a slave. You can come here as a slave and end up holding a high power in government. No other country is willing to do that, according to him. Let me see. In addition to raising questions about the accuracy of its assessment of the U.S., opponents of critical race theory have alleged that its premise, premises directly contradict the teachings of Christianity. In August, an activist who spent over two decades advocating for critical race theory, excuse me, shared how she grew to believe that its theoretical framework was incompatible with Christian teachings. And it is. It's very incompatible. Very incompatible. It doesn't mix like oil and water. During a live stream event sponsored by the Southern Evangelical Seminary in North Carolina, Monique Dusen, who co-founded the Center for Biblical Unity attributed her abandonment of her, quote, secular frameworks to a conversation with theologian uh, Christa, uh, Christa Bon Traeger. She noted that although the people she knew growing up did not use the term 
quote, critical race theory, quote, everyone used, the, uh, used some of the same terms or some of the same phrases, end quote. So therefore, you're not going to have a bunch of black people running around here talking about some, I believe in critical race theory. But the ideologies are prevalent in the conversations. That's what a lot of us as black people, honest, honest black people will tell you. You can sit back and you can say that, oh, I ain't never heard of critical race theory until now. But the tenets of it, the ideologies have always been there within a lot of people. Um, But surprisingly, when I was growing up, you didn't you, you really didn't hear too much of, of this victim mentality. Like you probably had more people telling you that you can be better than what you were, that if you work hard and you strove to become better or to change your situation, that you could do it as a black person. But nowadays, I mean, it seems like that people who've already made it or who was able to take care of their families and they make pretty good money. It's almost like they're telling you that, that, well, you, you can't advance but the whole time that they're advancing, they're getting more followers and making more money on social media, but they didn't want to tell you that you can't do it. They want to tell you that America is inherently racist. So therefore don't even try to do anything because America is not going to let you do it. But let me go ahead and finish this up. They sympathize with the allegations that racism was pervasive, that whites do not change their views on race related issue on a race related issue until it directly benefits them. And that quote, white privilege end quote informs every aspect of American society. Dusen encouraged her audience to urge those who, who subscribe to critical race theory, especially any Christian friends sympathetic to the worldview to quote, uh, quote, to truly get into the word of God, to understand what it truly means and quote, couldn't have said it better myself. And actually I've said that plenty of times on my channel, plenty of times. So get into the word of God. Stop focusing on these manufactured emotion driven videos and, and articles and newscasts to make you believe something that isn't true just so they can play on your emotions because we live in a clickbait world right now where clicks and views are very important and they add to money clicks views that generates revenue money social media blue check marks all of that stuff influence and black people sit back and allow the mainstream media to coerce them into believing in some foolishness like critical race theory to where folks got to come out and come out with this woke church stuff. What are you woke from? If you got the Bible, you've been woke. So what else? So what else outside of the Bible to have you awakened from? Tell me that if the Bible is not the absolute truth. And it is not the, the supreme standard of being awakened or woke. Then what are you looking to outside of the Bible to be even more woke? Like there's another set of truths out there outside of the Bible. That's what people have to ask themselves when they get into this, this, these whole movements that's media driven, but that's owned by white people. White people are the ones who own the media. So if we're so against white folks and white supremacy, then why are you using their media outlets to tell you how to think and what to think and how to feel about certain things? Doesn't make sense. But then you want to, you want to just totally ignore these African people, 9.2 million African people living in Africa who are just being just sold stolen real bondage you don't want to talk about that why because it doesn't push the narrative because it's africans doing it to other africans 
It's not white folks doing it to Africans because you got nothing to talk about. But you rather talk about the oppression in in America by white supremacists. But the only examples that you got, you go all the way back to the 1940s and 50s and, and even in sometimes in the 60s. Then you throw out your little anecdotes. I remember one time I was pulled over by a cop and he and he made me get out the car and lay face face down and, and he was a white cop and I was a black guy. And... Yeah, when was the last time that, that, that you was stolen from your home? When the last time was your kids ripped from your arms and taken 250 miles across the country or, a car, or, or even across the continent? probably into another country never to be seen again this man probably hasn't even seen this family probably don't even know where they are but you want to talk about this manufactured emotion driven media propaganda that has been devised by these media companies owned by billionaire white people and that makes sense to you Anyway, man, I can go on about that. Y'all y'all know I can. I got plenty of videos on it. But anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and stop it right there. Um, But you know what? As always, man, you know, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. You know, do you believe that slavery still exists in Africa today? Or do you kind of think that, eh, well, you know, I don't I don't I don't think that that's that that's pretty accurate or yeah, I acknowledge that. These things are still happening in Africa, but we got our own thing that we're dealing with here, white supremacy in this country. Or do you happen to believe the only thing that we need to be focused on as Christians is the word of God and spreading that gospel. That's the only thing that we're going to be able to use to combat the evils in this world. Nothing more, nothing less. Whatever you guys think, let me know in the comment section below. And as always, like this video, rate it, share it, subscribe, hit that notification bell, guys. And uh, you guys enjoy the rest of your day and you have a blessed morning.